All right, we'll give it a minute to change. Do you care about Caitlyn? Yes. I mean, shoot. Yeah, you can't. What? Feature kid? No. <laughs> See, that's Big it. Boy now. We're in church. You can't feed your child. I, yeah. yeah. That's why they have cry rooms. This is the cry room. I know. <laughs> I tried to get my friend to come tonight, but she has twin grandbabies. She's, she's yeah, like, yeah. I'm sure she don't have a cry room. I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's on the road right there. In the I know. Yeah. We all just Change do them. all the things. <laughs> Change them, feed them. I, What's up, Mini Pop Tart? Mini Pop Tart. Okay. How you doing, friend? We were a little behind tonight because I, I worked right up until five. So I'm going to wait just a minute and let everyone kind of trickle in. There's a little sweet baby eating dinner over here. What's up from Babel? Uh, no, I'm not going to say that because I, I don't know you guys and I don't know what that is. I don't know what her side is. We love you too, friend. What's up, Bama? Phoenix in the house. What's up, friend? Race, would you change the music to something a little less hardcore? We're listening to Christian, yeah, Christian hip hop, but in the background, it's like, oh God, yeah. I'm like, ooh, that's a little, that's a little intense. It's a little intense for the moment. I was wondering. I poured too much in there. I thought it was less than it was, but that's okay. We just started this, so I'm still getting used to like. Okay, there's CK. All right, cool. We got CK in the room. We'll go ahead and get going. Um, yeah, that should be fine. Um, for those of you that are new, hi, I'm Dallas Barbie. I run a barbering ministry and a church inside a barbershop in Biloxi, Mississippi. If you're new, I'm super glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, and for those of you that show up every week, you already know. You already know what it is. We love you. Um, we're going to do something a little different this week. Um, we just came out of this series about um, bitter judgment and resentment. And A, it was really heavy and it was really good, which I'm, I'm super stoked about. I've had a lot of really cool feedback from it. A lot of people willing to kind of dig in and do some some serious heart work, which has been incredibly encouraging. Um, but it also, it just opened a door for the Lord to speak to me about something. And I think really what he's been kind of laying on my heart is we what what is the type of church that we are? right? We are doing this weird thing where we have church inside a barbershop and online on TikTok and on YouTube. But he kind of reminded me of places that I've been in my uh, church relationship over the years. And I always want to be the person that I needed for other people. And he just kind of started asking me about my church experience and I was like oh I see what you're doing here like I want to be the church that I really needed um a church that will talk openly and transparently and honestly about hard things um there's just a lot of stuff that I don't know it's kind of like taboo in church, like, hey, you don't talk about that. Sex. Yeah, you don't talk about sex in church. Um, what's another one that's like off the cusp? Divorce. Yeah, divorce. Woo, we don't talk about that in church. Like, make your decision and we'll you step down from leadership and we'll sort it out later. Like, it, I feel like if we were talking about these things beforehand, being proactive instead of reactive and standing together during the hardships like this walk would look a lot different um so tonight that's kind of what i want to do is we're just going to open up the open up the door and we want to hear from you guys tonight um 
in here, I have kind of a list of stuff that people have like written in to me and asked me about in my personal life and in um, the ministry community. And then uh, we're going to ask the, you know, the people that are here in the shop tonight too, what, what they think. Um, just what are things in church that you feel like aren't being talked about, but you would love them to be talked about? Um, I know that some of it is personal, right? And you're, you're safe here. You guys that are here every week, you know that this is a safe space. There were, there's no judgment here. Um, we're coming from a place of open, open hands and open hearts. Like we, we really want to walk in healing and walk in freedom with other people. But I was just saying to these guys before we turn the um, live on, like our secrets keep us sick and we can't heal things that we're hiding. So whether it's something that you're struggling with personally right now, or if it is, um, you know, something that you've seen or you've seen someone else go through. Or it's just something that's been in the back of your mind and like, why isn't this ever talked about? Like, those are the things we want to hear about today. Um, Phil is kind of off to the side over here and he's, ooh, watch your toes race. Um, he's off to the side and he's taking notes um, and is going to kind of write down the things that um, that you guys say. And we're just going to continually pray over this for the next few weeks. And we want to provide a space for people to come and start sharing uh, more about this. I want this experience here for everybody to be like, I, I'm not here for Dallas followers. I'm here for Jesus followers. And part of my role as a leader in ministry is to raise other people up. I've been the one on this side of the screen for the last two years, and I just feel really heavy in my spirit. It's time for me to start positioning other people to use the platform that I have to be able to start sharing their their stories of hope for others to hear. Um, a lot of people know all my dirt, which is great. Uh, the Lord struck me with this this morning, and I texted it to Phil and he just said the best way to walk into your next miracle is to speak loudly and boldly to anyone and everyone who will listen about your last one. And I'm going to continue to do that, but I definitely want to move into like a more one-to-one -one basis and provide an opportunity for other people to start sharing and practicing talking about their testimony and sharing what the Lord's doing in their life. So tonight, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'm going to have Phil pray us in. And um, yeah, we're just going to have a have a conversation tonight. Have a little Q&A and figure out where you guys want to see this go in the next, um, the next couple of months. Um, I didn't mention quickly, I forgot, because we're doing this different and I was off track a little bit. But yeah. Um, if there's anybody being crazy in the comments, don't worry about it. We have the best moderator on the internet. CK is in there. She's dealing with it. Um, so if you see someone saying something nasty, pray for them and keep it pushing. Don't engage in it. It just makes it worse. Um, obviously, the enemy is going to send send little darts in here. But that's the biggest thing. You don't want to allow yourself to be distracted from what Jesus is in here trying to say to you or your neighbor tonight. Um also, if you need help, you want to be part of what we're doing here um, in Surrendered Studios, you have questions for us, you have prayer requests, you have prayer uh, praise reports for us. If you just click this little image on my profile, there's a link and there's a drop down at the link uh, to our YouTube channel, um, Instagram. You know, everyone's tripping out saying that TikTok's going to end, so y'all better... Go follow the other places because TikTok can close down, but I'm not going to shut up. So there's that. And then if you want to help uh, support us, you can do that through our website as well. Is that everything? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
All right. Oh, man, super glad that uh, you guys are here tonight, and I'm super just humbled and honored to be here as well. So if you guys just want to pray with us, we'll get kicked off tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again just for this opportunity to gather together here in the barbershop among friends and family, and also through the internet, um, this technology that we can reach so many people um, through this. And I just pray that you just to bless this conversation tonight. Help us to, to dig deep and be vulnerable in the things that um, are real but get hidden in the church that they just don't seem to want to talk about it. But God, you're a God of, uh, of order and of love, and you want to see us to be able to open up and be, and you want to answer all of our questions. And I just pray that through all of these things, um, questions are, are answered and they're not, people aren't shut down or, or, or hidden away just because they have real questions about real hurt or real things in their life. And I pray that you just uh, um, let us be able to, to hit on some of those things tonight and the following weeks. And uh, we just pray that, that God, your spirit is here guiding um, Dallas and myself to, to help answer the best of our ability. And God, what we can't answer, you'll help us. And um, just pray that your spirit just be with us tonight, Father. And um, help us just to show your character, which is just love. Love on those who, who need it the most, God. And we just love you. We thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. So. <laughs> my tripod. He looks like he's just a little warm. Yeah, it was a baby check. Sorry. Um, so I've had this list in my little notebook for a while. Back in Spokane, I used to run uh, our ministry started with uh, men's and women's groups and we had them separate. So this is coming from a woman's perspective. However, this was very this goes both ways. Anybody can and should be talking about these things but when we you can go turn it down if you want i'm oh i'm hot as heck um Reese is freezing. <laughs> I know, the one day he didn't bring a sweatshirt but uh i asked i asked the the women in my group and they're of all ages of all different backgrounds they uh we did this thing on zoom so it was people coming from all same there's people from all across the united states and a couple people from other countries that came to our meetings too but I got to know these women, women really well and then asked them one night, like, what are some things that that you would like to be talked about more? And I'll be honest, I was really, I was really shocked at their answers. I was shocked at just how vulnerable they were um, to be willing to say, like, these are concerns that I have, but no one in a church setting has ever been willing to talk about it. So I'm going to read a couple of those um, from this list. And then um, we're going to go around in here. And as we do that, let this kind of stir your spirit. Let this kind of jog your, jog your thoughts. And um, we'll open it up in the comments in just a little bit. And um, we want to hear what things you guys want to hear about too. Um, So again, I'm just going to read this list. There's no judgment here. People were nervous and like, well, I don't know if this is silly or not. No, none of this stuff is silly to me. If it's important to you, it's important to me. If it's important to us, it's important to Jesus. Um, purity, mental health, um, spiritual, uh, mental and spiritual health. Um, someone said church, meaning the church of acts versus the church of the modern Western culture and discussing mm -hmm. what those differences are and, and why we've gotten where we've gotten in, in our Western culture. Like, why don't our churches today look like acts? Ours, me, that was kind of my basis for this was that's what they did in the Bible. They just met in people's businesses, met in people's houses. I don't need a church building, you know, but that is, that's always been a thing. Like, why don't people talk about that in church? It's a, it's a, it's a tough one. 
I think someone got a good idea one time and say, hey, we can market this and make a bunch of I money off of it. literally just wrote church business. Oh, um, think alike. So another person wanted to talk about holidays. What's okay and why? That's a tough one because people have a lot of opinions about a lot of different things. Um, I have very close friends that are, I mean, they, they, they were mad. They were mad at me that I let my son wear a costume on Halloween this year. Mm. And I, if any of you have followed me for any amount of time, you saw I did like an entire series this year talking about Halloween and, you know, kind of what the Lord has said to me about that. So I think that's a, a big one, too, that a lot of people wonder about different different holidays. Easter's coming up. I'm pretty sure there was no bunny pooping out eggs at the resurrection. <laughs> what? Right? But, Mind blown. But where, where does that fit in? Um, where does it fit in, and what does Jesus have to say about it? Uh, codependency. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, healthy boundaries and healthy boundaries when you're serving. Mm. So within the confines of big C church or ministry or serving your community. Because I, from personal experience, I'll tell you that's a hard, it's a blurred line to go, okay, what are the, what are the healthy boundaries? Um, for instance, with um, Mr. Ray. You know, there's times when you got to go, okay, what, what's okay and what's not? Mm-hmm. You know, and you've seen me kind of work through that and be like, ooh, okay. Because just the same with relationships. We have got to have healthy boundaries in place. Parental relationships, um, friendships, um, romantic relationships, all of it are with our kids. Like, we've got to be able to have healthy boundaries. Jesus had boundaries. For some reason, I do not understand why people think Jesus didn't have boundaries, but he sure did. Um, so healthy boundaries, I think that's a big one. Um, female pastors. hey Lots of people like to ask me about that. And I love talking about it. I don't have any problem talking about that. Um, Jewish holidays. Uh, the voice of God. What is What is the voice of God? What does it sound like? Um, testing spirits. Ooh, I, re- I remember her talking about that. Um, the marriage bed and what is okay there. Uh-oh. That's, that's good. I, I've never heard anyone talk about that. I literally just saw a video the other day talking about it, and it was really cool. He was basically just like, he was just basically saying that like, in the marriage bed, as long as you're okay with it, and it, you're not hurting each other, and it's blessed. You're married. But I mean, how many, how how many times have you been to church where they were just like, "What's up? Let's talk about it." We've never talked about exactly. it exactly ever. Yeah, and I think that's important because I know people bring you know. For me personally, I brought a lot of baggage from my past, yeah. and if I'm honest, me and my husband were sleeping together before we were married. Uh, my son is proof of that. I was not in the place where I am today with the Lord when I met my husband. In my mind, did I have every intention, like, I'm that this is my person? Yeah, but I had a really weird, twisted up view of just marriage in general. That's because I've never seen a healthy marriage. So, um, we definitely, I, me, I'll talk for myself, I struggled with certain things inside the marriage bed after being married because of choices that I made before we were married. And I know that it was because of things that I did before we were married and it got drawn into our marriage. That was tough. Um, So yeah, I think that it is, I don't don't know why people don't talk about that at church. Um, Discernment, more uh, Holy Spirit, Um, unclean spirits, that's good apologetics and unbelief um ooh, yeah prayer in the spirit with or without tongues a lot of people have been asking me about tongues lately i think because people have recognized over the last couple of weeks that i'll pray in the spirit and they can't see like understand what my mouth is saying 
So a lot of people have been reaching out, being like, do you speak in tongues? Some people do, some people don't. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit, and if it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, it's available to anyone that believes. Um, but how to get it, and like what that looks like, I think a lot of people want to know more about. And the opposite, like, does it mean you're not something if you're not speaking in tongues? You know, people, there. I know a lot of churches that base a ton. Like, if you don't speak in tongues, you are not saved. If you're not baptized in these specific ways, you're not saved. So I think that's a really good one. Um, rapture and what happens when you die. That's a whole, whole big old box to open. Um, the voice of God versus your own voice. Uh, food addiction. Oh. That's good. Um, walking in personal persecution because of your faith what does that look like that's good spiritual warfare mental health um modesty and discernment in what that means personal conviction and modesty that's good um tithing that's a i, I like talking about tithing it doesn't bother me at all um addressing how to address sexual sin mm. um Finding your personal identi identity in Christ and what that looks like. Uh, operating in God's daily will. That's good. Uh, more mental health. What, ooh, I forgot about this. What is the purpose of free will and how does it actually play into God's plan? That's good. And then more uh, spiritual gifts and getting into the spiritual gifts, digging them apart and the Holy Spirit in general. How does it, how is that uh, all brought together? So those are the ones, um, those are the ones that I have. What do you have, Phil? Uh, yeah, so from the beginning, I uh, just kind of wrote down these kind of the ones that are hidden. Uh, some person said, you know, what is true salvation? What is the meaning of that? Um, having boyfriend out of wedlock. I'm not sure if that's maybe sexual as well or just having a boyfriend and not being married I'm not really sure what they meant by that one um, raw addiction um, casting out demons church hurt um, domestic violence mm. um, having a mental disability but also being a believer mm. and how does that look like um, moving forward uh, rape and sexual abuse in the church itself mm. um, that's a big one um, yeah that, they have, don't want to talk about that I actually have a personal story that we can get into at a later time I can hit on this one. Um, Self-righteousness, pastoral pride. That's good. Um, that's good, yeah. And then you hit on it a second ago, but women speaking in church, being built up to be pastors, leaders, having a place on the stage platform. Um, and then children's prophetic gifts, parenting through that. Mm. And then, oh, I like that. Yeah, that's good. I like yeah. that too. Um, and then someone mentioned um, the Bible talking about not having tattoos. I'm sure you'd love to hit on that one. Love it. You, literally, there's probably five hours of content on my page if you want to just right. scroll back through. I have to talk about it all the time. Yeah, and then someone mentioned, you know, what does the end times look like and are we close? Are we there? And what does that look like? Um, I think it's hard to tell because the Bible talks about no one knows the hour. Yeah, we literally don't know. But there are things in Revelation that talks about, hey, these things will begin to happen as the end times come closer. But I think my parents, 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 pastors were talking about, these are the end days, repent, yeah. turn every, around. Every generation has said so, that. So, man, I think for me, and this is something just personal that I felt, the end times are going to happen. And if I'm ready, if I have Jesus in my heart, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, the end times are coming, and what the Bible talks about happens if you don't have Jesus in your heart when that comes. It's not going to be very pretty. It's not going to be good. But... Get ready now. Get prepared now. Accept Jesus in your heart now so that when the end times come, you don't have to worry about it. You know that you're going to be basically enjoying it, I guess. Well, I think there's a lot of fear mongering around the whole book of Revelation yeah. in general. There um, is. The, I mean, just literature, for speaking from a literature or literary standpoint, the book of Revelation is... Um, 
an apocalyptic writing. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. Um, which, there's both sides of the fence on this, both from people that I've studied from that I respect both opinions and both people a lot. Um, you can't go into a parable knowing, saying out loud, I'm reading a parable or I'm telling you a parable, but then get halfway through the parable and go, oh, I'm going to take this part literal. Right? So a lot of, I think a lot of the confusion there is A, just figuring out what you're reading, first of all, um, and going like, man, I don't feel like, does that come from the heart of God? Like, I'm going to write a whole book just to terrify folks. Like, I'm going to just terrify people. I don't feel like that's God's heart. As a, as a believer, that book is not written to terrify me. That book is written to prepare me, but also I just don't get wrapped up in Oh, it's the end times. I'm not wrapped up in that. Because I know that that's a good way for the enemy to distract a bunch of people too. For sure. Because there's a lot of people out there stocking up a bunch of crap in their house and doomsday in and, yeah. you know, counting all the chemical trails. In the, and that's fine. Like, that, that, if that's what you're doing, that's between you and the Lord. Well, okay? there's a phrase that, that says, misery loves company. And Satan's miserable. Yeah. He got kicked out of heaven. He wants everyone else stressed exactly. and worried about so it too. Exactly, so it's like, he's going to obviously create something that puts fear in our lives and makes us worry each and every single day of what's to come. But it's like, man, if you have belief in Christ and Jesus and you know that his word is true, then you don't have to worry because when it happens, you're not going to be here for it. And honestly, it doesn't change what we're called to do. Right, yeah. Even if the end is tomorrow. Today, right now... I'm called to tell people what Jesus has done in my life, period. Like, his blood, my testimony. That's what we're called to. I'm called to love people well. I'm called to disciple and be discipled. So it doesn't matter if half this earth is on fire. We're still supposed to be doing those things. It doesn't yeah. change anything. When food was scarce and no one could get toilet paper because of... You know, the C word that we're not supposed to say. Um, guess what? Yeah, was it a little whoa at first? Yeah, I'm from Washington. We were shut down for four freaking months. It was a little scary at first. But at the end of the day, it didn't change what I was supposed to be doing. It changed how I was doing it. I wouldn't be here sitting, talking with you guys in Biloxi, Mississippi. I wouldn't be talking to anybody on TikTok right now if COVID wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't. But because it happened, it forced us to, to go, okay, God, well, what do we do now? We're not allowed to do certain things, right? So, yeah, it, it was a little, this is weird. But when you just go, okay, God, how do we navigate it? What do you want us to do? Like, I'm not, I'm not tripping. The Bible says he's going to take care of all my needs. And, like, yeah, I cut hair. Miss Freda can cook. You know, so end times come, hey, maybe she's going to cook and I'm going to cut the hairs and, you know, you have a skill, you have a skill, someone's got a garden, we're, we're called to take care of each other. I'm not out here hoarding everything, worried about me. Like, he says he's got it. You know, I just know that we're supposed to focus on what we're called to and not be distracted by the fear. We are not called to walk or live in fear, yeah. period. Yeah, scripture talks about, it says do not worry about anything but pray about everything everything yeah and if so one thing i could say about that whole deal is if you're truly like you're scared about that and you're having anxiety about it and you're constantly worrying about it that that thing that thing we need to that's where we need to dig in yeah that yeah anxiety and the fear about it yeah not the actual end times but just no being just why are you so afraid of it because yeah. that that is uh that's not what, man, God doesn't want us to live like that. You know, just terrified all the time. doesn't matter what it's about. So it's more the fear fear factor that we got to dig into. What about you? Anything that comes to your mind that you're like, I have never heard about that in church. Or, man, I've thought about this. Well, but one tithing, like I never had heard of that or like religious what it was until I came here. For and real? So, yes. 
For real. Oh. Like, I knew about don- donate donating to the church every week or whatever, but until I came here, I never heard the word tithe. Oh, okay. So, that's a good one for me. Um, but not necessarily that this just relates to me specifically, but um, more so, like, I feel like churches hit a lot on, like, trying to lead people to Jesus, but... Once we get there, what does everyday life with Come Jesus on. look like? That's good. Like, how, how do I live that out, you know? That's good. I feel like sometimes we kind of like that. Yeah. Or the church is kind of like that. I've definitely had I've definitely had that experience in majority of churches that I've ever been a part of. Like, run down here to the altar, say this little yeah. prayer. You say this prayer and you're, boom, your life changes. Mm-hmm. First of all, there's no prayer of salvation in the Bible. Right. It doesn't exist. But we're brought up to think that that's what it is. Because I don't, I don't, sounds like you too. I've been to church camps and all these things. And man, I thought I got saved 72 times. I'm like, I've been raising my hand. I felt a little up in my throat and walked down to the front and was like, aren't I saved? But nothing ever changed. And then, you know, when I did want change and I was like, I'm, I'm showing up. I'm willing to do the work. And I think it's just. No one was there to like, hey, come on, let's do this thing. But I think part of that goes back to Book of Acts versus Western culture. Mm. Yeah, it brings you back to someone thinking. It's just misinterpretation of scripture because it talks about, you know, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you'll be saved. And so someone down the line was like, we need salvation. We'll write prayer. a prayer. We'll write a yeah. prayer for people in church. That way it's a good kind of segue into things. And I think it's like you take the the Bible as face value and just read it for what it is. Just But not really let it get in here. Yeah. And I think that's what Western culture has done is they've seen how it can benefit them. Yeah, or just how can we jazz it up? How can yeah. we soften this? Because, ooh, that thing, you got to... You gotta give ten percent of your money. Yeah. Ooh, how can we soften that up? That seems a little. Ooh, people aren't gonna like that. It's like, but I think that's a big. I think that's a big part of it, you know. Or we love the the show of who we, because you hear that a lot too. We led thir- two hundred people to the Lord during that church camp. We did that. No, you didn't. I I don't save anybody. Only he does. And that's something that happens in here between you and him, period. But they love the, we did this. Our church has this many people coming in. We've saved this many people this year. But then what happens after? Because that's the hard part, right? Right. Like you, as a barber, getting hired. Yeah, I got hired. But now that we're in here every day doing it, that's the hard part. That's the part where we're like, okay. Today is a little slower. All right, what do we do today? All right, you know, that's the part where church should should be. That's why we do what we do here. We had a great conversation this morning, but it was like, you gotta, we gotta show up for each other every day. Like sometimes you're just on my heart and I'm like, I'm gonna send him a little text. But that's because I'm asking the Lord, how can I be a better leader to the race? How can I show him what you look like today? How can I be a better friend to him? But unfortunately, that's not sexy. It doesn't make money. You know, so a lot of, I think a lot of churches are lacking in that because it doesn't look good on a billboard. And I hate saying that, but it it just is. Book of Acts, they were just like in the house. No one was looking at it. No one was seeing everything and showing everyone in the world what was going on. The day-to-day, just like marriage. (sighs) Miss Freda knows. When you're just at the house, it's a lot different than when you're out on date night and you're holding hands and you both all dressed up. But date night happens because of the real hard work that's being done at home, you know? So I think that's a really, really, really good thing to talk about. Um, And I think that you're definitely not alone in that. There's a lot of, especially younger people that are like, This doesn't make any sense because I've been to a couple of things and, you know, but then no one, no one called me up. No one asked me to go have lunch. You know, no one's walking around in my life with me. So what does that look like? I don't know. What about you, Will? I don't know.
You want to wait? Okay. What about you, Freda? Open doors. Open doors. That's good. Yeah. That See, that one's broad. It's, it's huge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, the spiritual warfare stuff is just... That's another one of those things. It's big. It's broad. I do think that there are a lot of people that use it as a scare tactic. And a lot of people that are like, I'm on this... I'm a demon hunter. You know? But, like... It's a good band. <laughs> lord (laughs) but i mean like they're at the end of the day like you got to deal with yourself you got to deal with your own stuff right and there's a lot of people who they want to walk around and do all these crazy things and a lot of them are doing it because they like people to see it but they have their own stuff that they're not dealing with and that part is not what people want to talk about it's not you know i've seen a ton of really cool um encounters But then you find out very shortly after the people who are laying hands and praying, they are sick too. Very sick. But they don't want to put that on French Street when they're struggling. That's why I got no problem. TikTok has seen all my mess. Because I never want to be, I never want to be phony. I struggle too. You know, like I got days when I wake up and I don't want to get out of the bed. If you don't, then you're not human. Yeah, like what? Everybody struggles, but there are things talking about open doors. There are things that I don't do anymore because I know that it is a doorway that could possibly take me back to where I was before. And I'm not playing those games. You know, there's certain movies I I don't watch. I don't care what anybody thinks about it. Oh, you're a baby or, oh, you're too Jesus or whatever. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I don't watch horror movies. I just don't because they get in my mind. I have a, I always said when I was younger, I have a very vivid imagination. Um, It turns out it's a prophetic gift and I see things, right? Like I can close my eyes and God will just show me an image. That's a way that he speaks to me. But when I put certain images in my mind, it clouds that up real quick. I don't like waking up in the middle of the night, sweating the bed because I went to sleep watching something that I had no business watching and I know that I have a very vivid, very active imagination and then I go to sleep and I'm having nightmares. You know, I had that as all the way since I was a kid. So there's certain doors that them suckers stay shut. I don't want any part of that because I know how it affects me. But there's a lot and they're going to be obviously, they're going to be different for each person. Two main things that I think don't get talked about enough is they'll talk about broad. These are open doors. You need to close those. There's also a huge, huge opening to speak about personal conviction and where people are at, right? Um, This has been a topic recently that I spoke about with a a handful of people. Um, Someone was uh, pretty upset with me because I put a post on Instagram um, talking about my husband playing uh, Harry Potter. Mm. Someone was like, she wanted to give me her whole earful about it. Well, that's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. For you, it might be an open door. For you, you might not. You might not supposed to be playing Harry Potter or watching a Harry Potter movie because it could be an open door for you. Harry Potter's not an open door for me. So I'm not concerned about it. If the Lord said, Dallas, don't, do not, you bet your bottom dollar, it's done. Right? Like, I don't like my son doing the, uh, my husband has the video game. And at first I didn't know what it was. So I didn't know if it was going to be like a kid game or not. It's not a kid game. As soon as we realized that, I said that. Hey, Matt, this isn't a kid's game. I don't really want Presley playing that game. Okay, no problem. We have a respect with each other. It wasn't that I don't want Presley to, you know, see a dragon and like whatever. He is not dumb. He doesn't think it's real. He knows the difference between make believe and using my our imaginations and you know, whatever. But some people that isn't okay. Some people can't watch that stuff and be um, spiritually well. 
But we also need to have grace with each other with that stuff and go, oh, I'm, I get it. Like, don't, I'm not going to, if I know that my friend over here struggles with this stuff, I ain't going to her house going, hey, girl, let's talk about Harry Potter or whatever the thing is. I'm not going to do that. Don't be a stumbling block for other people. Um, if you can have a couple of beers and be okay, cool. But if your friend even talks about a beer and they're, you don't bring it around your friend. You don't do it. It doesn't mean that you can't in a healthy way, but don't bring it around them. We don't want to be a stumbling block, but we also don't get to point fingers and go, well, I'm not, I can't do that. So no one else should. It's not how the world works. You know? I think a lot of that has to do with how much you hear God or how much you're paying attention. Yeah. So some people just disregard everything. Yes. And I do agree with that. Not, uh, that's probably where I am. Like, you know, just, I, Okay, what? Oh, no, I shouldn't. Yeah, no. Then that and it comes I'm with not, your relationship. Still, yeah. Yeah. It's like, is that my boy? You know. Or it's your parents and their parents' voice. That the way that the way that yeah. you know, I was specifically raised, you know, I was raised you don't watch any sort of things like that really strict just because like I was too. Her parent my my mom's parents, let's see, it was funny. <laughs> See, my mom's parents were super strict, and my dad's parents, they weren't as strict. So it's like, I could I could go and like ask my mom something, and be like, hey, can I do this? And she's like, eh, probably not. And then I asked my dad, and he's like, well, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, try it out. <laughs> so it's like, um, it, it just all depends, and it's just, I really like what you said about the personal conviction, because your stumbling block isn't going to be somebody yeah. else's. Yeah. And it's not fair for you to, because you don't know that person's story. It's not fair for you to say, oh, this doesn't work for me, so it shouldn't work for you either. And I think the, yeah. another Western culture church thing is they've, they've found certain things in the Bible that it says, oh, this is for everyone. And really the only thing that is for everyone is Jesus. Jesus, period. That's right? the only thing in that word that is for every single person, no questions asked. Right. It's for everybody. And I think... I think that, man, if, if people have your downfalls, you have your struggles, but if it's not like a, if it's not like a hindrance or, or a, what's the word I'm looking for, um, a bondage type of thing. Yeah. Like, like you said, the Harry Potter is not going to affect you. Yeah. And for me, like, it doesn't affect me either. Like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, things like that. I know that it's just people's imaginations put into, on paper and in films and they're amazing. And, yeah, you could go super Christian. Yeah, that's witchcraft. Well, what else is witchcraft? Well, literally, the spirit of uh, witchcraft is manipulation. Yep. Yep. So, you know, if do I feel manipulated by reading, uh, it, is it fi- nonfiction? Fiction. It's true. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Non-fiction. So, do I feel manipulated as an adult by reading a, f- a fiction book, and maybe one category would be yes, and another category exactly. Not. So is and this, that's so the that's the point. Sense would come yeah. Out. So just is the church really part, but doing manip- again, it's witchcraft. It's people manip- just people? throwing things at you know at you as a newbie. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, oh, well, ooh. and that's a big part you of know? it is you just having enough to just take a pause and go. You know what? I don't know. And it's totally okay. The people have said some weird stuff to me since I've been down here. Because this is a different culture as far as, you know, we, we're we not in the Bible Belt. We stink in our Bible Belt. And the Lord told me coming down here, the biggest adversary I would have would be the spirit of religion. And I mean, just today, Race and I dealt with something that was ugly. Someone saying some ugly stuff. But part of me... Somebody else could have heard the uh, the other the other barber. Oh. Somebody else could have heard that and been completely wrecked by it. They were like, but me, I heard what they said about us, and I went, well, first of all, it made me sad for the person who said it, and I said I can't. I'm excited to pray for that person because I didn't know that I needed that I had you know, someone to be praying for in that way. And it made me think, I'm going to send some donuts down there. Um, 
and just reach out and go, hey, we care about you. Even if you don't like us, that's okay. I care about you. And then B, it made me go, we're doing something right. Because if other people are attacking in that way, we're doing something right. We're doing what God's asking us to do here. You know, but I've had a lot of people say some sideways stuff to me. Some of it that I've literally never heard of before. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But instead of being, I'm A, I'm not going to agree with you because I don't know. But I'm also not going to disagree with you because I don't know. I had got no problem going, I'm not sure. I'd love to hear your side of it. But I need to pray about this. Like, I need to go away. I need to get in my quiet place. And I need to ask someone that I trust. Um, uh, for an example, there was a girl on TikTok that I've corresponded with a little bit. Um, we're not, I don't know her personally, but we've corresponded. And all of a sudden she went off about yoga and was like, I mean, crazy about it. Like yoga is of the devil. You're bringing spirits into your body. You're blah, 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 blah. Now, at the time I went, I have never heard something like this before about yoga specifically. Like, what is this? I listened to her side of it. I watched a couple of her videos about it, speaking on her um, point of view. And then I prayed about it. And then I reached out to my pastor, my like spiritual mom. And I said, what do you think about this? Because uh, I knew that she would have an open mind to have a discussion about it. And she's also open to changing her mind, right? She could be like, yay, yoga. And then the Lord says, actually, no. She's that type. Like, she's open to whatever the Lord says. So I asked her about it. And I'll be honest. I think it was very, in, to me, this isn't for everyone. This is for me. But for me, I think it was very similar to the Harry Potter thing. Do I agree that for her specifically, yoga is very bad? Yes, I do. Because she just came out of um, being a witch and um, new age. She was practicing. She was a practicing New Age witch. Mm. So she was already yoga she's is already not tempering yeah. with those things. So yoga she's is not to okay it. for her. Mm -hmm. I've never used a crystal to do anything ever. But then I'll be honest. I also get a little nervous. Like if I see a pretty rock and I put it in my house, is someone gonna freak out? I don't know. So those are those things that where we as a family. We just kind of, we got to be open and vulnerable about it and go, I don't know. I like called up my pastor, Pastor Lisa, girl, I heard this and I've never really thought about that like that. And what do you think about this? Can we talk through this and pray through this? She prayed for a day. I prayed for a day. We came back to talk about it. You know, it was good. And it doesn't always mean an answer is going to come right away either. That's okay. But I definitely think your past is going to say maybe certain it's not things. Black and white, for yeah. Necessarily what for and everybody. what is? Nothing. Right. Nothing, because we're all different. But all he's he's not asking us for perfect. He's asking us to progress. That's what he's asking us to do. He's asking us to be in relationship and be vulnerable in relationship with other believers and continue to progress. There's going to be things that I, his generation's dealing with right now that. I don't know a lot about because I'm not, you know, doing over there. But if he comes to me and asks me about it, am I going to sit down with him and go, okay, this is something I haven't really thought about because I'm almost 40, but because you're struggling with it right now and I care about you, I'll sit down with you and let's pray about this thing together. Like, I'm going to ask the Lord to reveal this to me so I can talk with you about this. Well, what does Jesus say the greatest commandment is? It's not any of the ten that was already written. I'm, yeah, that's he, right. He said you, because his disciples were asking, you know, hey, what's the greatest of these? And he's just like, none of them. It's so simple. Love God and, and love, love your neighbor. Love to others. Yeah. Love God, love others. You're going to change the world. And I think, man, we get so caught up, and I was guilty of this. I get so caught up in, oh, that's demonic. That's not Christian-like. What it's like. Jesus was probably one of the most raw people. And I think if Jesus was here today, most of us wouldn't recognize him. Yeah. Most of us wouldn't know who he is. Just because we have this idea that's construed by our parents, parents, 
theology, right? And so it's like something that I've learned really just in the last few months is that God is love and it looks all kinds of crazy ways. And I think if you just bow to his will and open up your mind, he'll show you that it's really, it's really not that complicated. It's so simple that if you just love him and love his people, you can almost cross any, any boundary, any barrier that holds us. And it's just like, I think if we have our closed off mindsets of what the church says is or says isn't, then we cut ourselves off from fulfilling the great commission. Like I really truly believe that in this modern day, if Jesus was here, Jesus would, would, would be in the streets, right? In the crazy dark places and church culture these days would say that's unacceptable. Yeah. But it's like, that's where Jesus is needed the most. Most churches don't even need like the real Jesus because it's a bunch of people who already know Jesus. Like Jesus called us to help the lost and the broken. And most churches don't always have the lost and the broken. You have some churches that they're all already saved. So it's like, you know, if you're not getting in those new people, then what are you doing? You know, if you're not fulfilling the Great Commission, if you're not... Well, and and it the same goes to if we're sitting in it. Like, if we all just sat in here every week and pretended we were great. Huh, yeah. I mean, come on. Because I know that I sat in, bi- in big churches, mega stinking churches, for a long, long time going I have got to be the only one that is as messed up as I am in here because everyone around here acts so perfect they've got it all together their houses are in order you know their kids are doing great this is happening this is happening and I'm like I'm drinking myself to sleep at night because my mind is so loud that I can't I can't think of anything to do to get it to shut up like I'm struggling with postpartum depression. I don't want to hurt my child, but I, like on a daily basis, I was thinking they, my husband and my son would be so much better off without me. Mm-hmm. But nobody was talking about that kind of stuff inside my church. No one was saying, hey, new moms, like we should get together. Hey, postpartum depression is a thing, like let's, let's talk about it. No one was talking about that stuff. So I'm showing up like a zombie Every week at church going, well, I guess I'm just supposed to listen to what they say and then get a little zap. And, you know, I didn't know what Jesus looked like. I didn't know what that meant. No one was walking that out around me. You know, it was just like, oh, have a cup of coffee. And, yeah, real you know, Jesus, it wasn't real. Real Jesus encounter gets in front of the the Pharisees in the middle of someone breaking the law and when the pharisees are saying hey she was caught in adultery stone her her. that's the law okay throw the first stinking rock right if those without sin throw the first rock which one of you guys are good so perfect so pure that you could you could kill this woman for the thing that she's committed go ahead i mean jesus was right there saying go ahead throw it and that's that idea of well do you want religion or do you want relationship exactly because religion will get you by yeah. But a, a relationship will fulfill you, overflow you, and bring you to places that Jesus really wants to work in your life and show you who he truly is, right? And, yeah, if we just live by the law of the land, we could get by, all right? We could get by, but we're always it's always like a cycle of failure yeah. because we all know that. That's why Jesus came. We cannot – all the all the books, all the rules, all the – Nobody can. Legalism. It's impossible. That's why Jesus came, because he knows it's impossible to do it. He goes, I love you so much. you Man, you Pharisees, you out here trying. And what did Jesus say? Did he, did he say he didn't come to fulfill the law, but he came to abolish the law? Yeah. Because he wants the love, if we just walked in love, that says, hey, I know you're going through some crazy stuff. It doesn't matter. Give your heart to God first. He'll take care of that stuff later. Yeah. Like, yeah, so what? You, you go out and party till you're blacked out on the weekends. Jesus still loves you. Yeah. Hey, you, you're dealing with this, this, and this. Jesus still loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And and I saw this video this one this one time. Uh, he was talking about, you know, if you, if you accept Jesus just as your Savior and not your Lord, then you're missing it. You have to have both. 
he's your Savior and your Lord. And when you start to to live with him as your Lord, you'll want to start to change those things. Yeah, it just it starts to happen. Yeah, you start saying, hey, maybe I shouldn't be doing these things. And it's through the own personal conviction of the Yeah, Holy not because anyone told you that. Right. Not because anyone was like, you're you're terrible and you're doing this whole thing wrong. That doesn't make you feel like you want to change anything. You know what I mean? But when I finally encountered Jesus, like I had a real encounter with him. And I, I, I wish I could say I woke up the next morning and like, ding. It, no, that wasn't the case at all. But I walked towards him. I went, man, that was crazy. Like, that was crazy. I encountered you. Like, I felt, felt you present. I have this weird sense of peace. I'm still messed up. But I have a weird sense of peace over my life. Where's my Bible? And I just like wanted to open my Bible. Weird. Right? And then the next week, well, I don't really know how this works. I want me to look on YouTube. And I just started looking up pastors that looked like me. Young, un- uneducated, unchurched, you know, people. Because why would I want to listen to a stuffy old white man that's never, I mean, for real. I don't want to listen to no stuffy old white man that's never walked in any place that I've ever walked. Because that, I just feel beaten down. But I saw some people who have been through things that similar, not the same, you know, same storm, different boat. But I went, wow. Like, they're up there telling me that they've struggled with depression but God, they're up there telling me these things. But then they started saying how, you know, they started saying, this is how you walk this thing out. Like you need to find a group of people and do life with them. And I never really knew what that meant until, until I started to group around some other people. And, you know, now I, I love it. It's not check in on Sunday and shake hands and yeah oh girl your hat looking nice and oh yeah how's the kids listen to this little sermon sing my little song and then i'm out that for me that never transformed anything in my heart when i was trying to commit suicide on a bathroom floor and jesus swooped in there and he encountered me that's what started to change my heart but then i would often bring myself back to that place and be like where where are you today and then I meet someone that I wouldn't, there is no way that you and I should have, there's no way. We've lived wildly different lives. You know what Truth. I mean? Like, <laughs> there's Truth. no way that I would wake up and go, I'm going to go seek out this type of woman with these backgrounds and she carries herself in this way. And I, I freaking want to be her friend. But God made that thing happen. I know. And he just said, like, listen, she's got things that you need. And you've got things that she needs. But you both got to be willing. I have to be willing to sit here and hear some things that I probably don't like. But stay when I hear them. That's the, that's the difference. You have to hear things you don't like and then stay put. I have to hear things I don't like and then not run. Because, boy, I was a runner. She's a runner. She's a track star. For real. I will hear someone say something to me and then go, you're crazy. That's not, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't live like that. You're doing wild things over here or your wild things aren't my wild things. I'm gone. See ya. I'm not, I can't live like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, that's how relationships work it's how they grow it's work for things to work you have to work like i'm sorry i wish i was just an easy little slice of pie to swallow but i'm not Mm -mm. i'm a whole individual so are you so are you so are you so are you but every single one of you were called into my life there's moments where i have to interact with you a little different than I interact with you a little different than I interact with you God's growing me with that I can't speak to you the same way that I speak to her 
you know, sometimes you need a fire up your butt and she needs some <laughs> grace and a gentle freaking hug. But I, I... I need somebody to beat me over the head. She needs a hug. <laughs> but five years ago, I was not capable of those things. It would have been my way, what I'm comfortable with, and all of you better chew on it and deal with it. Or, oh, you don't like that? All right, fine. Move on. But the Lord's like, no, that's not how this works. Like, how... How are you going to grow if you just keep doing the same thing over and over? You keep struggling with the same things, but you don't reach out for help. And yes, you're going to get let down. I warn everybody that comes into any kind of relationship with me, friend, business, any, I'm going to let you down. A hundred percent, I'm going to let you down. <laughs> like that's making my heart hurt, but it's because I know that it's true. I'm going to let you down at some point. I'm going to let you down because I'm a human. But I just pray every day that when that happens, we've both put in the work and we both trust God enough to continue to walk through it together. And that you won't give up on me when I let you down because I promise I won't give up on you when you let me down. Yeah. And too many people in the church today, they give up. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of people giving up on me. I was just thinking about that the other night. Like, there's so many cool things that have happened here in the last year and a half. And I can think about 10 people right now that I wish so bad I could share it with. But they gave up on me at the beginning. And there's about 10 more that I just wish I could tell them about right now, like what we're having, what we're doing right now in this room. But when I said that the Lord called me to Biloxi, Mississippi, they gave up. They were like, you're crazy. And I haven't heard from them since. If there's anything that I want with my life is that I don't, I was so good at quitting. All the things that I should not quit, I quit all of them. And everything that I should have quit, I held on to every single one of those things. I want to quit the things that are not for me. And I do not want to be a quitter on people anymore. No matter how hard that is, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Because I've met people down here that it would be a lot easier to just quit. <laughs> like someone else will come along. You know, someone else will come along and fix that. Like, I'm just not made for that. They, they rub me the wrong way. They're, our personalities don't click, whatever. I, I can't sleep at night knowing that I quit on people. Because I've been quit on so many times that I pray God never lets me forget how that feels. Because I never, ever, ever want to be a person that makes another human being feel like that again. He doesn't ask us to be perfect. He just asks us to continue to progress with each other. That's it. I'm never going to be a perfect woman, but I promise I will continue to make progress every day. There's going to be days when I fall back, but I need on that day, I need you to show up and go, yeah, you made a mess of this thing. And it's okay. I'm going to sit here with you. Let's eat some soup. Let me give you a hug. And we're going to keep working at it. You know, we need people like that. All of us do. But we can't... How, how can we rightfully ask for those people to be in our lives when we're not willing to be those people for others? I can't. I can't pray for God to bring people into this ministry when I'm not willing to show up and do all the things he's asking me to do in it. Mm. You know? I can't pray and ask God to bless this business when I don't want to come in and do the, the things that nobody sees. So he put me in a position to do the things that nobody sees by myself for a year. And it was really hard, but I did it every day. And I'm so thankful that I did it because now he's here. There's no way he would have walked in this door if I wouldn't have been obedient for the last 
you know, however many months. Because he's smart enough, he would have, his, the Jesus inside of him would have seen through the BS. Or I wouldn't have obeyed and had my spirit built up and been edified enough for you to see what was good and go, I don't see her. I just see Jesus and I feel like, I feel like I better go in there. But we have to do that for other people and for the future and continue it, you know? I think all the things that bum me out about church, out of all the things that bum me out about church, that's probably the biggest thing, is that it's a, a place you go. Mm. But it's not, it's not a way that you live. And I want this to be a way that I live. I want what's said in this room to affect your life. I want it to affect my life. I want it to be an open enough space that we actually are humble and sit and go, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, you can come in here and mess us up, you know? And I see that he does that in here. And I don't care if it's five of us or 50 of us or 500 of us. I don't care. I, I will fight for whatever this thing is forever because this is super powerful it's super important but that's you know the goal is to teach you guys how to do that and walk around in your life with it because what we do here should be happening all the time it happens in your barber chair I see it little flickers of it and it's amazing it's happening at the barber school you get moments where you get to chat with people about certain things you know yeah moments where you get to be back in the back of the coffee shop just stirring your soup and praying like we have opportunity to live this way every day but are we taking it are you seizing the opportunity or do you even want it you know because that's another part of it sometimes it's cool to just be like oh yeah i'm i'm a good person jesus yay but then we're not really living that. And I'll tell you from my own experience, that's a lot harder. A lot harder to go back on. To have to come, I had to come out and be like, I was faking it. I was straight up faking it. That's probably one of the ugliest, hardest seasons of my life that I ever had to come through. Then that was based on church. Like I just wanted to look good at the church. I just wanted people at the church to respect me. But here I come teaching these classes and leading other women in the church and I'm going home drinking myself to sleep at night. That's sad. Because I was pouring out of an empty cup. Mm. For a good year, just showing up, hung over, teaching meetings. And it wasn't because I was like, this is fun. I want to socially have a beer. No, I was like, I don't know how to shut off my mind. Like the things in my mind are so loud. Alcohol wasn't my problem. It was a symptom of all this other stuff that was going on. But no one was there to go, hey, depression is a real thing. Mental health is a real thing. And we need to sit down. We need to love on each other. We need to talk about this. It's okay to talk about it. You're lonely. It's okay. Let me let me be your friend. Let me be by you. You know, you're you're struggling. You feel alone in a stinking house that is full of people. I felt alone in my marriage for years. Like Matt's my best friend, but spiritually, I felt alone. I'm like I'm in here doing all this by myself. What's what is this? I, you think that I could just stomp up into the church? And grab one of the ladies with their cute little clogs and their pretty hair and go, yeah, well, here's my situation. What do I do? I didn't have people like that because it didn't look good. That's not cute. It doesn't look good on a pamphlet. Or you thought that you could. Then you do it. And then they wreck you. And they never talk to you again. Yeah. Then they just... Oh, well, that's really weird and sad, and I'll pray for you. Or tell you that you need to just go work on it. Yeah, you you really need to pray about that. Nah. 
No, like, I don't say that anymore. I'll pray for you. No, let's pray. <laughs> you know? Like, I've been told that so many times. You should really be praying about that. Or I'll pray for you about that. Pray with me. If you really believe what you say you believe, do you not believe that that spirit is sitting inside of this room, inside of your heart, inside of my heart? Pray with me right now. Like, I don't need to go out and show people that I can pull, you know, that the Lord uses me to pull spirits off of people. Because to be honest, it's not the funnest part of what this life is, right? But I don't have to announce it when I walk into a room. Because when I walk into a room and I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to lead my day, the Holy Spirit announces that to every evil thing in that room. I don't have to say anything. Those evil things, I see them right away. Because I'm letting the Holy Spirit lead. I don't go around hunting for it. I don't need to. I can feel it in people. The difference is today, I don't just go, Ugh, that's scary and a little weird and leave I'll sit in those rooms I'll talk to those people I want to be friends with those people because I was one of those people for a very long time being in bondage over a lot the, the devil cannot possess us but he can oppress us and I lived in oppression for a very long time loved Jesus wanted to do the right thing couldn't couldn't literally couldn't like over and over was doing the same cycles over and over until I was like, okay, something has got to be different. Well, because you think like the church tells you, oh, pray about it. it, Or you're doing something wrong if you're not free from it yet. Yeah. It's like, no, like, man, sometimes you just struggle with stuff. And you just, and you just want someone to just walk it with you. And Yeah, sometimes you just need someone to sit by you and hold your hand and go, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We can sit here as long as you need to. Be ugly in front of me. It's okay. I'm not scared of your ugly. Because I've been real ugly before. And I'll probably be ugly again and I'm going to need you to look at it. And that's what Jesus did, man. He knew they're ugly, but yet he still chose to go out of his way. Yeah. And meet these people. Not to let you bring your ugly over here. He goes, no, I'm coming for your ugly. Yeah. And I love you no like, matter what. Like he almost chases it down. Yeah. Like looking for the opportunity just that's to show him. That's at 99. How- yeah. That's that parable, that story in the Bible. That's what that thing is all about. Like Jesus with the the uh, tells ninety nine sheep stay over here because one little sheep got away. These are the people that have their stuff, like they're solid, like they they're they got their self control. They they can function together and go. We're good, Jesus. We're okay. We trust you. Go ahead. We'll be right here waiting for you. We will not move. And then this one little sheep runs away and Jesus goes, all right, I trust them. They obey me. They're going to do what they need to do while I go over here and get this get this ugly. Yeah, I saw a quote that says, it's outrageous for you to think about him leaving the 99 for the one until you're the one that yeah. he's leaving the 99 for. That's right. And it also makes me think of the brother of the prodigal son who came home jealous at the party that his dad was throwing and how many times do we get jealous at maybe someone else getting their blessing getting their getting blessing their freedom. getting their freedom or even just getting the attention you feel like you deserve yeah but it's like dude you're saved you're serving in the church this person came from nothing it was broken in their sin bonded up bound up dying going to hell and they just got saved and you and you're gonna sit there with your arms crossed like well where's my miracle at no, like you have to clap for others. Like if you can't clap for others, then it's never going to be your turn. Exactly, and it's just like this idea of like, like that's what Jesus is about is is this just audacious love that just radically changes people's lives. And we need we just need to start being examples of that. Oh. If if Jesus didn't come to judge the whole world. I doubt he sent us to do it. <laughs> yeah. Good point. I mean, for real. Because there's a lot of fancy Christians out here pointing all the fingers. Oh, well, these people preach like this. This guy over here with his Louis Vuitton and his 
and his shoes and he's on big church stage and there's people hungry that isn't and pray about it then because you talking about it to a bunch of other people isn't going to make anything change but you talking to the one who changes things about it watch out now because he'll probably change your heart about it instead of changing their situation. Dang. That's true. But if people spent more time doing that instead of... Nee, 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 nee. What are these people doing over here? Nee, 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 nee. Why am I so bothered? What is it inside of me that is so bothered by your sin? It's because we have this... Probably because I got my own going on that I still am not willing to talk about. It just goes back to the self-righteousness. Like you're so caught up in projecting a certain image yeah. about who you are because this is the way it's supposed to look like or it's supposed to talk like this, act like this. I was there for a long time. I would call people out in public for their stuff, yet I was dealing with my own stuff that a handful of people knew. And I would get this sort of, some sort of like sick satisfaction out of it. And that was probably more of a slap in the face to God than those people who were in the sin because... I'm sitting here dealing with my own sin, separated from God, but yet because I have this cloak of self-righteousness thrown upon me of while well, I'm in this position and I look this way and people don't really know the dirty, then I can talk the talk, but I'm not really walking the walk. And this whole idea of like faking it till you make it, but then you never make it. Yeah. And it's just like, like the spirit of, hip of hypocrisy was heavy on my life and I just had to get real with God and... <laughs> I was like, listen, take everything that that is not of me. And I've had to call and ask for forgiveness from a bunch of people. But that's the work that God decided to do in me when I finally gave him my heart and said, listen, change me. I want to be more like you. And whatever that looks like, if I got to swallow my pride and <laughs> call up some folks. Yeah, ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness, then so be it. And it's just been a really cool experience when when we get out of our self-righteousness, we get out of our own heads and we get into our hearts. Um, and we are, that's the thing that's so cool is we are made righteous. Yeah. Like we're set apart, but self-righteousness and his righteousness are wildly different. Yeah. And I spent, I probably spent a good year just wanting to be right, not righteous. And I thought I was so smart. I, d I just wanted to prove Right, I belong here in a church because mm. I look like this. I had everybody telling me I didn't belong in all these different places. But I wasn't doing that out of love for anybody. I was just like, well, let me show you how much I know. Let me show you how right I am. Let me convict you. That's ugly. That's so ugly. And I mean, having to, having to work backwards from that was a lot. But it's put me at a place now where I love to hear other people's stories. People, you know, oh, you're talking to this atheist or you're talking to this girl who says she's a witch. Yeah, I am. Absolutely, I am. Because Jesus died for her too. Like, absolutely, I am. Because you're too busy over here judging me about it. So I know you're not having lunch with her. Right. You know, I know you're not loving on her. So, oh, were you going to do it? No? Well, then mind your business and let me do what I'm called to do. You know? Like, I'm meant for dark places. I'm meant to be a light in dark places. That's what we're called to. Salt and light. Like, I'm meant to go back there. I'm not afraid of that. People want to talk a lot of mess about how we operate in here and who we talk to and why we do it. Are you going to go back there and love on them? No? Mind your business. Like, for real. I just don't, at this, I don't care what anyone thinks anymore. I don't care what anyone thinks about what I look like, what I sound like, what I act like. All I care about is I know what I'm called to do today. And that's what I want to focus on. Today, I was told to show up to work. Today, I was told to have that meeting with the people earlier. Today, I was told to love on you. Today, I was told to come in here and do this tonight. That's what I'm going to do. Tomorrow has enough to worry about on its own. I'm not putting my 
put my sense and my time and my energy over into tomorrow. I don't even know if we're gonna, if I'll make it there tomorrow. You know, bless the Lord if I do, but I don't know if I will. So I just want to do the most best thing that I can that he's calling me to today with today. So whatever that thing is for you, whatever he's got on your heart to do today, there's still time in today, right? There's, you know, apologies that need to be made and leafs that need to be turned over. Just That's the one thing, if I could encourage you guys with anything, all of this stuff we talked about tonight is just don't go to sleep on it. If there's something that he's brought up in your heart and in your th in your throat, in your chest tonight, like don't go to sleep on it. And we should live more like that. We don't know if tomorrow's coming. I can walk out into that parking lot and get whacked by a car right now. And I'm not going to I'm not going to live in fear like that, but it is a possibility, you know? So I really live I try to live from this place of when I lay my head down at night, I go, "Man, if Jesus showed up in my bedroom right now, would he be proud of what I did with my day? Like, could I say to him, like, this is what I did today. This is how I spoke to race. This is my conversation I had with Phil. This is the text messages I was sending. This is the videos I was watching. These were the conversations I had in my own mind about other people. Would he, would he be okay with it? Most days, there's something I got to talk to him about, right? There's something I'm like, I'm not very proud of that. And that's, that's what this whole thing is, sanctification. Like, it takes time. I'm, but tomorrow, can I go tomorrow and be, be proud? This isn't a, a sprint. This thing is a marathon, right? So tonight, when you lay down tonight, Maybe he'll tell you right now. Maybe he'll tell you when you get in the car. But whatever it is that he says to you, do that thing. Because we don't know what's happening tomorrow. If he tells you to say sorry to someone or if he tells you to just ask for forgiveness for something today. You know, something 10 years ago. Just do the thing. Like it's so valuable. And he's so loving to be able to even tell us those things and put them on our heart. You know what I mean? Like that's wild that he cares enough about us to go, hey. Hey. If you just hand this little thing over to me, like it's gonna help heal your heart. It's gonna help you be a better mom. It's gonna help you become an incredible husband, but we need to deal with these things. He cares about us that much to give us these opportunities every day to deal with little things that we can handle bite size instead of, here's this huge nasty list of all the ugly things you've done. Could you imagine looking at that? Overwhelming. But he's not like that. He's just saying, hey, Freda, that little thing that I've been pestering you about, can we talk about that? That's all he wants. Just Would you just give me 10 minutes? Just sit in your car for 10 extra minutes tonight just by yourself. Can we talk? Like he loves us that much that he wants our time. That's incredible. So that was a lot. And I'm really glad that we all just sat through that together. <laughs> oh lord the best is yet to come yeah and i appreciate all you guys putting in your your two cents we heard you we got we got your guys's things too and same if stuff pops into your mind over the week that you're like i've never heard this talked about at church or the lord put this on my heart email us just links in the bio Go on to my website, email us, let us let us know what you want to hear about, what you want um, us to dig into. Um, I'm going out of town this weekend for my little boy's birthday, so I'm going to be off the stinking radar. Um, Phil is going to uh, lead service next week, um, but this week we're going to be praying, and then, uh, yes, probably this is what the kind of the direction that we're going to go in is start digging into some of these topics that you guys had brought up um tonight it it's going to be uncomfortable that's when you grow 
it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of a lot of you know work <laughs> but if you guys are willing to walk on this path with us we we would love to have you um we need the encouragement just as much as we come to be an encouragement um so if you guys would just keep us covered in prayer while we while we kind of go into prayer about this um i'd sure appreciate it i know all the things there, there's a lot of things on the list so mm -hmm. whatever the lord puts on on our hearts to start digging into first we're gonna get your spoons because <laughs> we're gonna dig <laughs> phil you want to pray yeah yeah <laughs> heavenly father we just once again thank you for this time to gather in your name to just learn more about you learn who you are and how we can just use your character to overflow our lives to change them ultimately just to serve you better god i pray for each and every single person in this barbershop and every single person on the other side of this screen that you begin just to start working in their lives to release their hearts to the things that you've called them to release to you for you to be able to just to overflow them god with your spirit for them to be able to pour out to those that they need to be pouring out to each and every single day god and I pray that we don't have this fake it till you make it mentality, but God, that we just give it to you and you'll help us with it each day. God, because we know that on our own, we can do nothing, but with God, with you, we can do all things. And I just pray for grace and for peace and for patience, for joy, for each and every single person, God, and on the sound of my voice, that they'll begin to start finding true freedom in you once they start kicking you out of the box they've created in their minds and in their hearts. And God, we just pray that we find you in the places that we need to find you the most in. I pray you to be with us as we go about our, our night and as our day until next week we meet again. God, just every step that we take, every word, every thought that we speak, let it be of you, Father. And if it's not, help us to kick out all those bad habits, mm -hmm. acknowledge them and change them, God. Purify our hearts. And let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds through your word, God. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Again, if you need us this week, boop, click the link in my bio. Uh, it'll take you to the website. There's all the links there. Um, prayer requests, praise reports. Uh, if you want to be part of the things that we're doing, if you want to help us with the things that we're doing, um, if you need help from prayer with me or Phil, um, whatever it is, just get a hold of us. We stink and love you guys, and we'll see you guys next week. Hey.